good morning. We're getting ready to head out from the Pendleton, Oregon area. I think we've got most everything packed up. Now it's just a matter of putting up stabilizers, hooking up the truck, and getting ready to get out of here. All right, so we found the cat scale and we are getting ready to go see how much this big thing weighs. So it looks like we're steer axle, 4,400 pounds, 64 on the drive axle, 95 on the trailer with a gross of 20,480. So we are well within where we should be. So that is a plus. I want to jump in here real quick and give you a little bit more background because I'm fully aware that me just spouting off the numbers in the video probably isn't all that helpful. So to give you a little background, that day we were running a full freshwater tank, which was 100 gallons. Our black and gray tank were both empty and we had probably about 20 gallons of gas in the trailer. And on top of that, we had just got fuel. So we were sitting around 25 gallons of fuel in the truck as well. So, with those numbers, the steer axle, I said, was 4460, which that corresponds to the front GAWR, gross axle weight rating, in the truck, which is 5,200 pounds. So, we're about 740 pounds under there, so we're good there. The drive axle was 6460. That goes to the rear GAWR in the truck, which is 7,000. So we're under by 540 pounds there. Now, if you add those two numbers together, that will give you the number that corresponds to the GVWR of the truck, which is 11,500 pounds. The total when I added those two together was 10,920. So we're under on GVWR by 580 pounds. And the last number to kind of look at the capacities of the truck is the GCWR, which is the gross combined weight rating. And everything together, when we weighed it, was 20,480 pounds. And our GCWR for the truck is 23,500. So we're under by 3,020. So we're good there too. Really, the only thing I'm kind of concerned about, which even not really, is we just added a larger fuel tank on the truck. So we added about 30 gallons capacity to the truck. So you're talking a little over 240 pounds. If that's full, uh, still brings us under by uh, about 300 pounds in the current setup. So we have made it. We are at our first Harvest Host location and we are at a winery in, I think it's Buell, Idaho and absolutely gorgeous. And I turn around, there's mountains back here. We've got vineyards over here. It is just gorgeous. So I think we're getting ready to head up there and have a wine tasting. And when we get back, I will let you know what the name of the place is. I've, I don't know, I, I could guess, but I'm gonna butcher the name, so. We'll have it figured out by a little bit later, so talk to you in a bit. Well, good morning. We are still here at Holzinski Winery. I finally figured out how to pronounce it. And it is absolutely gorgeous here. I mean, you can see this morning it is just beautiful mountains in the background it doesn't get much better than this 
Uh, we had a great night. Nobody else ended up showing up. It was just us down here. So it really uh, made for a nice quiet evening. For a little bit of RV tech talk, for those who are wondering about boondocking, wondering how factory systems are on RVs, debating on if you need a bunch of solar, if you need lithium, whatever. So, just to let you know what we have. We have, from the factory, 510 watts of solar going through a Zamp PWM controller. And we just have the two regular 12 volt uh, lead acid batteries. As far as boondocking overnight, we ended up, had the furnace running, and we were pretty easy on the electrical usage other than that. We did have, we used the Jackery for, to make our coffee in the morning with the Keurig. And then we also charged all of our phones and everything last night with the little Jackery. So we weren't using the batteries there. And with all that, we were full when we went to bed and we're down to about half now on the, uh, on our battery bank. So sun's coming up, so hopefully that'll start filling up and we're getting ready to hit the road, so we'll charge a little bit there. So we'll see how it is when we get there. Propane, we have two 30 pound tanks and we have not uh, emptied the first one yet. So, and that's been, we've been running the heater the last few nights, been running water heater uh, to last night. So, uh, haven't hit that first 30 pound yet, so I don't know uh exactly how much we've used but that seems to be okay for us at least for the moment and water so water we have a 90 pound freshwater tank and 40 pounds on the black and gray we did empty the gray before we left last night or the night before last and not that it really needed it but we just wanted to make sure it was completely empty and it's still not even registering going up yet uh, this morning. Black tank, we haven't touched. It's still not registering going up. And we had filled up the um, freshwater tank before we left. Well, actually, we filled it up probably the second night. And it is still showing that it is uh, pretty much full. So really hasn't been that bad. And we've, let's see here, Tammy took a shower this morning. I took a shower last night. Uh, so it's really not bad at all. Uh, granted, I'm talking one night, so uh, I just wanted to kind of give everybody an idea of what we have experienced, at least for the first night. I'll kind of keep you up to date as, uh, as we go along on this trip, just to kind of let you all know how a factory setup works when you're out boondocking, because I know there are, ourselves included, people that wonder what all we need as far as upgrades so that we can go out and do this. Anyhow, I hope you all are enjoying this little mini series of our first trip. If you are, please give it a thumbs up below. Subscribe if you aren't already so you can follow along with the rest of our trip and we will see you in the next one.